a group today we're going to be cooking up rattlesnake now this is not going to be a survival recipe we're going to be showing you how we do it here down south so this is a western diamondback rattlesnake one of the neighbors dropped off here last night they know i'm in the area and they ran this over and brought it to me so fresh snake i'm going to show you how to cornmeal it up use a little bit of oil and do some deep frying desert style now before we skin up this rattlesnake, clean them up, and begin to add ingredients, we need to go get our fire started. We need a good bed of coals in order to get our cast iron hot and our grease popping. Unfortunately on this video, I'm unable to show you the skinning and cleaning of that rattlesnake. Now if you're curious about the processing of snakes, go ahead and check out the video link in the description down below. It's an older video, it is age restricted, but it'll give you all the ins and outs and show you exactly how it's done. Now even this skin here that we're rolling up, it's going to be frozen, and we'll be showing you how to tan the skin, how to cure it, and make it so it's preserved. So every part of the rattlesnake is used, uh, waste not what not. Now undoubtedly a few of you are curious as to what that snake looks like without its skin and this is it. Uh, no skin, no guts, nothing but meat and a whole lot of ribs and vertebrae and that's what we'll be cooking up and eating here today. Now to get started we're going to take two eggs, a little bit of milk, put it in a pan and get it ready to start soaking that rattlesnake in. That's what we're going to use to keep our cornmeal, our flour, our spices attached to it before we put it in some grease because we're going to be southern frying this rattlesnake. A couple eggs, approximately this much milkish. Just add that in there. Whisk it up a little bit, break stuff. Just add your rattlesnake. a little while because that's going to be our binder we're also going to go ahead and add our cornmeal to a ziploc bag once our rattlesnake's done soaking in the eggs and milk we'll put them inside here and get them covered up Depending on the size of the snake, it kind of depends on how much cornmeal you need. That's probably too much, but cornmeal is cheap. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Some folks put some Cajun seasoning, uh, a little bit of garlic. You're going to find hundreds of different recipes out there. Uh, even like the rattlesnake roundup themselves, they make an actual batter that they put the snake in. But I kind of do it catfish style. I'm going to give that a few more minutes to let that snake soak. Go tend to our fire, and we're going to add some oil over here to our frying pan. Kind of a Dutch oven. It's kind of my old prized possession. We'll add some oil here, start getting heated up, and then it's game on. Feel the heat coming off of this thing. I think we have enough coals. Oh yeah, plenty enough coals. Let's get some cast iron and oil. The coals in our campfire are ready. We've got oil in our pan. It's time to go ahead and add some heat to this equation. Now before our oil gets too hot, starts to pop, we'll take our snake out of our milk and eggs. We'll put it here in the Ziploc with our cornmeal. We'll mix that up and then we'll be adding our snake into some hot grease and that'll get us frying.
ahead and get our hands messy one last time. coverage. Now it's just a really long tube with a slit down it. It's just what your snake is when they're all cleaned out. So you can get all that corn meal on the outside and also up inside the body cavity because you'll be pulling meat from both sides. We're ready. Wool's ready. Perfectly battered. Nice and brown. A few more minutes. Love that smell. Check it, but this snake should be done. Now when it comes down to frying things, most of it's not a time frame deal. It's a coloration deal. So you're looking for that golden brown, corn milk cooks up, darkens a bit, and that's really the issue. Now when you're dealing with trying to make sure you've cooked all the way through the meat, it's not really a big deal when it comes to rattlesnake. On either side of the ribs, they're real thin. That oil is going to cook it on both sides. The only big area or big piece of meat is going to be the back strap, which runs all the way down the back. But uh, even that, on a snake this size, isn't really that thick. Let's go ahead and pull this guy out. It'll cool down. Time to taste test. All right, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and see what it tastes like. Huck, huckleberry. Gonna come try it? So with a lot of these recipes, you'll see that folks have taken the neck all the way down. I guess you'd say that the snake is all neck, but they'll cut it into four inch sections before they even throw it in the oil. Now that works out pretty well. You can do it however you want. I usually like to just put it as one piece and that way I can flip it one time and make sure I've cooked it all the way through and evenly. But uh, when it comes down to this, a lot of times you'll cut it into sections. If you're just eating it yourself, what you'll do is you'll find that backbone goes all the way down and you're effectively going after the back strap and it's gonna come out in long strips. So see that? It's gonna be a back strap on either side. As soon as you grab that, and start pulling that long piece of meat. And there's gonna be even more of it on there. I'll just pick at that. But nice, 
greasy piece with lots of cornmeal on it. That's what we're looking for. Uh, you'll also eat in between all the ribs, pull the meat out between there. You can make a pretty good soup out of snake, but hmm, that's what it's all about. I like alligator, even without all the oil, reptile itself is a very oily meat, but it's a very distinct and amazing, amazingly good flavor. Mm. Some of the ribs are actually crisp enough to eat. That oil did really well. Some good meat. Now a lot of folks might be wondering or worried about us going and taking too many rattlesnakes out of the area. We're actually out here in the desert right now. And we've come across four. Four in the last three days. And we're around a desert community in this area right now. So a uh, heck of a lot of rats, a lot of mice, a lot of snakes all over the place. Not really, really messing with the population. If you were surviving out here in the desert, uh, if you live out here in the desert, you come across these almost every single day. So uh, think about some of the creatures that you have around your area, wherever you live, and just uh, kind of mix them up here. These guys have rattles and venom. Y'alls have uh, bushy tails and they live up in trees and collect nuts. So uh, just a difference of the animals that we have in the ecosystem. All right, uh, here you try this out. You've had snake before, yeah? Get you a good piece. Yeah. Not that. Okay. One more try. Okay. It's not gonna do it. I swear guys, I feed him. Notice he's not he's not losing weight. He's not a picky eater. We need a little bit more of this. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of it, take it over to the neighbors because uh, we're going to have a cookout tonight. But guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Check out the other videos again in the description on how to tan the skin, uh, other cooking methods that we have, how to skin, clean, and prepare these rattlesnakes. I'm sure some of you will tell me exactly what you think about my recipe or have questions as to what I've done with it here. So uh, throw your questions out there. Tell me what you think. Like, subscribe, comment, and we'll catch you next time. Huckleberry. Do I have something on my face? Now undoubtedly a few of you are wondering where that rattle went on the snake. And this is it right here. Now, if you're not sure or you're not really used to rattlesnakes, it might not look like much, but that is remarkable. That's 17 buttons on a fairly mediocre small snake. I wouldn't expect to see a rattle this large for anything under uh, six and a half, seven foot. So uh, kind of crazy. Now, a lot of folks will tell you that each one of these buttons right here indicates a year of life and that's not exactly true what it does indicate is a molting and a molting is where they shed their skin every time they shed it adds another button uh, they can molt multiple multiple times per year depending on how much food they have so if they have lots of rats lots of things to swallow lots of things to eat then they're going to molt more often if they have a fairly warm winter where they continue to be able to hunt and digest things, they can continue to molt all through the year. And that's gonna change and vary the size of these rattles. So uh, pretty crazy. No, it wasn't broken and put back together. This is not a hoax. 17 buttons on a little over a three foot long rattlesnake. Kinda of crazy. Now cast iron, I'm sure it's not everybody's bailiwick, but a few of you are probably interested in the rig that I was using here in this video. Now this is a frying pan with Dutch oven legs on it all the way around. It's not a Dutch oven. I believe it's called a spider, uh, either a spider frying pan or a spider skillet. Now uh, it does have pits all over it. It's got some welds. It's probably lived a pretty interesting life. I don't think they've made these in over 100 years. So it's taken me a while to find it. I really like the look and it should be featured in quite a few more videos. but. Uh, they were made to be used, so we're going to use the heck out of it. If you are a uh, Dutch oven, or rather a cast iron aficionado out there on the internet, and you know more about this, go ahead and throw some stuff out in the comments. I'd love to know more about my gear, but uh, other than that, 
Guys, go out there, try new things, enjoy it. Later.